How you doing? <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. It is June 7th, episode 502. 502. It's actually the best day of my life. Uh, great to have everybody here. This is the Morning Misfit Call. My name is Sean Murphy. I'm your head misfit. And on these calls, we have conversations about, well, just about everything. And when I say that, I mean that. So, and sometimes we're even surprised of new topics that we can bring to this call. The call was designed back in December 18th, uh, 2018. It was for me to get out of my own way to have a conversation with the universe to step up and say, you know what, if you're gonna complain, you can't complain unless you're gonna do something. And so I wanted to be able to bring some value and some new ideas and topics that most trainers won't talk about in personal undevelopment, personal undevelopment. See, that's the key. <clears throat> this isn't about doing more of what you already know. This is about undoing some of the things that have been done to you, old stories, the rewiring, the unwiring of some things that have got you stuck, that have allowed you to uh, change your values based upon who you've been told you are versus who you know you are. So those are our conversations. Today's conversation is a little bit about values. In our Secret Sauce Academy call this afternoon at two o'clock, we are going to be talking about values. It'll be our second week in our seven week series. And in this conversation, we today it's gonna be, what do you stand for, right? I, I say all the time, nothing is overpriced, it's undervalued. And when we talk about values, what are the things that are important to you? Is good health important to you? Is money important to you? And what I mean by money is being able to have it and not have to worry about it. Being able to have it come in effortlessly and with, without, without tremendous effort. Um, it's not about the valuing money as much as valuing what you can turn it, turn it into at, at a whim, right? It, it's not that we want to make more money because money really doesn't do a whole lot for us. It's an exchange medium. So what are the values that might need to change? What are the values you might need to readopt to help you create success, to allow you to have more energy, to allow you to have uh, better conversations, to allow you to speak easier, to allow you to motivate and move people into a new level of excitement and enthusiasm in Theos, God within. How do you, what are some of the values that need to change? So if I were to ask you to write down your core values right now, could you do it? Most, most, now you guys are above average misfits on this call. Most couldn't write down their core values. Integrity, peace, courage, love. W what are the things that you value most? And, and as you start to do that, d does your health, do you have a morning ritual that sometimes you do and sometimes you don't do? Do you have any kind of rituals that sometimes you do, sometimes you don't do? And the reason that you don't do them, why don't you do them? Do you have a consistency with needing to do stuff? See, it's our values that drive everything. Nothing is overpriced, it's undervalued. My daddy said that to me since before I could speak, I'm sure. He would, when I, we'd be in the grocery store, we, we had a little, I grew up in farm country and we had this little uh, kind of a, a catch-all grocery store. It was a hardware store, a little bit of a grocery store, a little bit of a everything store. And it was, the name of it was called Connolly's. And when we'd go to Connolly's, I'd always ask for some candy. And my dad would say, now, if you get that candy, there's a price for that whether it be having to do something in the barn, move something, clean something, get put, put tools away, fix my bike or do something. But he'd always place a value on everything. And sometimes it wasn't the price, it was undervalued. So I'd say, no, I don't want the candy. Well, because I don't want to have to do the work. <laughs> How many of us still have carried that value forward where we talk about wanting to have wanting to have the success we want, but we're not willing to pay the price. What is the price that is, is necessary? If you, were to, if you were to give yourself to describe, put on a price tag, 
what's necessary for you to achieve your next goal, could you do it? Could you put down on the price tag what it will cost you to reach your next goal? Not the one five years from now, not the one 10 years from now. Your next goal could be this morning. I want to prospect four people. I want to send out three messages. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> please go ahead and send out, <coughs> excuse me, send out your three messages of joy, of gratitude, of love, of smiley faces. Send those out. Send out your messages of joy, of gratitude. How many of you have sent those out consistently for the last 30 days? Some of you have. If you've sent out at least three messages for the last 30 days, every day, seven days a week, type a 30 in the chat. Type a 30 in the chat. Got to put my glasses on so I can read that. Cool. So now the question becomes, can you do more? Has it served you? What have you seen change in your world? What, what things have you seen change because you've done that? What subtle changes? See, that's what happens when you start to live from your values. We're not talking global changes that, you know, rotation, changing the rotation of the earth. We're talking about what is it that we value in the world? See, one of the things that if you're looking for things in the world, what did Gandhi say? Be the change you want to see in the world. So now that question brings, bodes then, if you're looking for change in the world, if you're looking for change out there, where's it going to have to take place? It's going to have to take place in here. So what's the change you're looking for? What's the value you're looking for? Do you have a list of values that you look for in people, in prospects? I get, I get that we want to find entrepreneurs. What are the values of an entrepreneur? Have you ever written those down? What are the values of an entrepreneur? Do, 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 do entrepreneurs, do they stand tall or do they, are they hunched over? I know that's physical, but do they have good self-esteem? Do they have good posture? Do they value uh, energy? Do they value kind words? See, the reason that we get stuck not doing what we want to do, it's very simple. We don't value it. Yeah, but Sean, you don't understand. I really want, I, I want my success. I value success. You can't. You don't. Hang on. There we go. I just saw some people wait. I'm like, I know there's, we've normally got more folks here. So let me just check. Sean, make me a host because I was got trying. It. I'm getting got messages. It. Got it. I just did it. Sorry. So you got to remind me. I know. It's like, we only got 20 people? What'd I do? <laughs> See, nada, Sean. Absolutamente nada. <laughs> Buenos dias. Hola, hermano. But see, so just to give you an idea, I was like 23 people. Hmm, that's cool. We normally have about 50, 45. But even in my own head, <laughs> there was something that wasn't, that wasn't <laughs> operating correctly. So therefore, therefore, it took my attention away. It happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. So I, I just wanted you to know this is, listen, I'm, I'm always going to tell you what's happening in my head. As crazy as it is, if you've ever seen those, I think it's on TikTok where it goes, have you ever thought of, wondered what's going on inside their head and the music goes crazy? That's me. So values. Why do I do this every morning? Why on vacation with this background around me and, and all of this stuff? Why do I do this? Because I, I value this. Vacation is a week. This is an hour, hour and a half out of my day. It's an important hour and a half of my day. I value this over anything else right now. It's why I do this seven days a week now for the last 300 and 
probably 380 days. In June, I started this 390 days, probably mm, for over 400 days every day. I know we did five episode 502, but I used to do the, for the first part of the, for the first half of the year, I would do this only during the weekdays. And then somebody in June last year said, can we do these on the weekends? I miss you. You want to know what the funny thing is? The person that asked that, that said, I want you seven days a week. Do you think they're on this call right now? Is it Rhonda? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Rhonda doesn't. Rhonda I try to find ways to get away from him sometimes, Luis. <laughs> 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 it was going to be my same comment, but only be on from Rhonda's perspective. I, 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 I don't get enough of Rhonda. I need more. Stop. You're such a liar. Um, Lightning's well, going to strike. Lightning. There's not a cloud, but he could make it happen anywhere. <laughs> so here's the fun part, folks. What do you value? See, we've all seen the exercise where the guy says, well, well I really want to get my why. And the guy takes him into the water and holds him down under the water. He goes, what are you doing? He goes, oh, just, about. and he shoves him back down under the water. And the guy's fighting and screaming and hollering. And he gets up and he's mad as a hornet. He goes, what are you doing that for? He goes, when you, when your why is that strong, you won't need any help. See, when you value your life, when you value this moment, this moment, follow me on this. Oh, I wish, I wish I could just, give you a shot of something. I don't care whether you drink it or it goes into your arm. When you value this moment, this moment, and this moment, and this moment, and this moment, for what it truly is, you'd never have another bad moment. There is only this moment. And, and, and all of those that are out there can be taken away from you. You can, you can avoid ever running into them. It's called death. See, we're all in the same race and we all hit the same finish line. It's called a grave. And when that starts to sink in, why do people, why, why do people who are in their 50s and 60s and 70s, why do we love hanging around them? Because they say what's on their mind. They don't give a rat's butt about anybody. Because they see, they see the finish line. And they're not going to worry about your feelings and, and, and whether they made you upset or not or, or telling you the truth isn't. Well, we don't, want, we don't want to discourage them. It's the dang truth, right? So those of you that are a little younger... Sometimes the clock ends pretty quick for people who are young. I bet everybody, one of us, all of us know somebody when we were in our teens or 20s, somebody died unexpectedly, right? A huge challenge that's happening right now is suicide for young kids. Mason, kid in Mason's school on Mason's lacrosse team last year. All of these things to say, every moment counts and when your values are out of line when you aren't clear on your values you wind up feeling less valued if you've ever had a conversation with somebody and you felt you didn't participate you felt they didn't hear you you felt you felt undervalued it's because you didn't keep clear on your values. Nobody, nobody can make you upset without your permission. Let's get very clear. Not a single person on this planet can get you upset without your permission. It's your responsibility. It's your ability to respond. Does that make sense? You've got, it's so critical that you decide what values you're going to live your day by. Now, we all have our values. We just haven't defined them. Would you go, would you go take a, 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 a keys and go scratch somebody's car? No, you wouldn't. 
You value property. You value other people's property. You respect. So one of your values at that moment is respect. <coughs> People who scratch a go key a car, their value of respect is out the window. But yet they want to be respected. Mm, I don't know how that goes one way and not the other. <coughs> so I say all of that to say this. You know how we do the 21 things you want in five minutes? And some of you inside of the Secret Sauce Academy got the exercise 21 minutes to do 101 things you want from your business. And some of you, it, we got stuck. We got stuck at 30 or 40 or 50. Because it's hard when you start to tell your brain, I want to have good things and I want things to happen. And, and you're because you're not used to that. You're used to being in a defensive mode. So I say all of that to say this. Go, listen, you can Google values. And there's some good videos out there to Google for values. And you can walk yourself through a process. And when you walk yourself through that process, you may be surprised of what values you've been operating from. Listen, here's the hard part. You all sit down. You all take a big breath. Some of you are operating from your parents' values. Ouch. Some of you are operating from an old boyfriend or girlfriend's values of how they saw you. Some of you are operating from a childhood's situation of how you got became value-based. I'll give you a perfect example. We all saw it on this call. The amazing soul in Miami, Eve. You saw how her life changed with a Barbie doll. That was of tremendous value to her. We're looking at it going, yeah, it's sexy. It's a sexy little doll. Hold on just a second. Here, start over tonight. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing doll. It has a big old star. But not one of us, I don't know, did anybody else go out and buy that? I don't think anybody else went out that afternoon and said, hey, listen, what's the, what's the, the, the skew? What was the exact skew you purchased so that I could purchase the exact same thing? I don't know of the 60 people that are on the call or 100 people that were on the call then or however many people were there. I don't know that anybody went, I want that exact same thing. Why didn't you want the exact same thing? If it brought Eve joy, and I believe it did, if it brought her confidence, and I believe it did, and if it brought her a, a validation, a vindication, a confirmation, don't we all want to feel better? Don't we all want to have that kind of joy? See, our joy didn't show up in a Barbie doll. But yet there's things that you're doing in your world right now. There's things that you're doing in your life right now. There's things that you're acting on right now that are not of your highest value. And when you grasp the amount of control you have over your day, you have over your minutes, you have over your moments, when you operate from your highest values, your, your, your ability to watch the TV and get frustrated, you're operating out of a frustrated value system. Injustice, you're operating from, 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 a, uh, from a justice value system. You're operating from a, from a system that says you can control things that you can't control. This stuff is thousands of years old. None of this is new. We just find orators who can, who can express it in a way for the people at the moment where it makes sense for them. Could you imagine if Epictetus or Marcus Aurelius showed up? We'd be in awe, but after about an hour of listening to them, we're going, good Lord, I, it's so hard to follow their conversation. Right. So sometimes I kid around. I remember when we, back when a year ago, 
when I call them affectionately, the kids came on, I said, what's some slang that I could use that I could throw out in the conversation that would just absolutely freak everybody out? And they were saying, oh, well, you could, you know, drop in fire or fax or I'm like, I have no idea what that stuff means, but I'll say it. And it was funny. I even played, I even played a, a rap song somebody sold me and everybody was, I go, what's a hot, what's a hot tune that everybody, a hot tune, you hear that? What's a hot tune everybody's <laughs> blowing on the trumpets? What's a hot tune everybody's listening to? And they told me, so I played it in the background and everybody's like freaking out going, oh man, Sean's got it. I'm like, oh, I ain't got it. I just played it off of YouTube. Anyways. But the value was, is I wanted to have some fun. I wanted to bring some laughter. I wanted to, to break a little paradigm. Because I promise you that song's not in my top 100 playlist. Your, music, your, your value for music, your value for food. All, there, you operate, there's nothing you do that's, not, that's outside of your value system. You even getting frustrated is part of your value system. So be aware of it. As you sit today, I would ask you to describe what are your values and then find out what your highest value is. Some of you, it might, it might be health. And our values can change. Our values can change, right? A, a, a parent has, has a child that's a pain in the neck, but all of a sudden, God forbid, the child goes through some, some kind of health crisis, an emergency health crisis. All of a sudden, whatever that child used to do that was agitating, aggravating, and just right out piss you off, no longer does. Because the second you realize that all of that could go away, you will value every single moment of it. So, those are some conversations. Um, I'm going to go to hands up now. Let's see here. Uh, Laura Jara or Jara. She's got her hand up. I see. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Good Sean. Morning. Hello, hello. How are you? Good, my love. Awesome. Okay. Um, it's funny how you talk about volume. And I was um, confused about what somebody said yesterday and and he said um sometimes you don't need the value you need the people and i was like i was confused by what he said and now that you talked about value i'm even more confused <laughs> so i mean i know um i value my family i value the things that i'm doing in this community and so many things but i was just confused the way he said it so if you could um Maybe help so me out. you got a little boy. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of food do you like to give him? Do you like to give him junk food or healthy food? Healthy food. Why? Because he, he feels better. I just feel like all the nutrition he gets. Um, so, would you, so would you say health is a value for you, for your boy? Yes. Okay, so that's one of the values you operate under. When he says, Mommy, I want a Coke... And maybe it's a special day, maybe it's this, or maybe the answer is absolutely no. But there's things that you won't let go into his body because you value his health. And since he can't make the good decisions, you choose to make them for him. So you value health, you value a strong child. Mm -hmm. Music you listen to, does it have cuss words in it, swear words? Sometimes, I mean, okay, so I barely use them. I mean, so, so low energy, so it may have, it may have great vibration, but low energy music is okay to go into your body. You're okay with, with, with having negative energy flow into your body. So you don't value pure, clean music. I love you. I'm just showing you examples. I love you, but you can't, you can't say I value health and then play songs with cuss words in it. Right. It's not about me being right. Because when you say I'm right, that's the ending of an argument because you just set up an argument with me going, ah, that's Sassafrasa, that's my favorite song. You're right, you're right. That ends an argument. This isn't about me being right. This is about you asking a tough question about values. And this is me because I love you. you listen, you've done more in this world than I'll ever do. 
having a child at the young age that you did, growing up, being this amazing mom that you are, right? So you, you've had your values, some of your values of, of childhood, of what, you, what a child should value, what a, what a 15, a 16, a 17 year old should value was ripped away from you. True or not true? True. And you had to adapt them. Your, your, your ability to adapt to a whole new set of values was instant. You had to instantly do it. Did you do it well all the time? No. Did you do it as well as, as often as you could? Yes. Were there some days you wanted the world to go away in a hell, hell in a handbasket? Yes. Are there some days you have more joy in this planet than any other person on the planet, 7 billion people on the planet? Because you have, a, you have somebody who comes up to you and hugs you and is sitting in the backseat of the car and pokes you on the shoulder and goes, Mommy, I love you. Do you know how many times you heard from a child, I love you at your young age? You know how many times more you'll hear I love you from your child than any mom on this phone call? Because you had him younger than anybody else has ever had one? So maybe, quite possibly, you valued love as one of your highest values. People will say, well, maybe, yeah, silly mistake, this side or the other. Maybe it was a value that you were operating from that said, the, the world's going to be tough. I'm going to set myself up for success. I'm going to set myself up with somebody who will love me unconditionally. Now, I don't know that any of this happened, but I'm, I'm changing the way you're looking at it. Because people, when they see, oh, poor thing, boy, that would must have been. A no, maybe you were setting the, yourself up for amazing success to have unconditional love pour into your life from a very early age where most people never had that. So when I say values, the shirt you have on, what caused you to put the shirt you have on this morning? Um, just because, I don't know, it's comfortable. Okay, so you value comfort. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, do you have, I don't know if you, I, I can't tell from here, but do you have fingernail polish on? Yes. Do, do you, so, I, and it's yellow, right? I think it's yellow? Yes, it's yellow. Okay. So. <laughs> Have you ever had it any other color? I always, this is my first time wearing actually some bright colors. And before I always have like very dark or. Okay, so, so, so follow me on this. Your yeah. values as it relates to fingernail polish and colors changed. Yes or yes? Yes. That's how we live from a value system. It's that basic. You, your energy changed. Therefore, your values changed. I normally do dark colors. This is the first time I'm doing something light. Oh, my now, God. <laughs> so, so my point is, is that this happens from everything. You're, you're about to eat some food today. Yeah. You're gonna, you need to ask yourself <clears throat> if the idea of could I eat something healthier pops up? Could I eat so something less healthy? Could I eat more of something? Could I eat less of something? Could I have a, a couple of snacks? Do I eat a full meal? Do I cook it? Is it fresh, is it fresh fruit? Is it, is it raw food? Is it cooked food? All of those come from your value system. Um, I know it's summer, but will you do anything today to teach your son anything? Is there anything on your, on your books to <clears throat> take him someplace? <clears throat> take him someplace <clears throat> or read to him or uh, do you want to give him any kind of education today? Yes. That's part of your value system. The fact that you got on this call, why did you get on the call? That's part of your value system about you, you believe in personal growth. What you didn't know is that I would come here and absolutely pick you up and hug you and squish you and squeeze you to make you, to, to awaken you to the thing, to this amazing life called you, called Laura. And that you're educating all of us. When you think I need to learn, you're the one doing the teaching. How do you, 
but it's because you're powerful. Listen, none of this works without you. <laughs> I, I, I really want you to hear how powerful you are. Because you do, you do the unimaginable. There's a, there's, a, there's a sign that usually gets hung in, in um, industrial stores, places like Napa or Home Depot or places where somebody comes. Be frozen. Can y'all hear him? I can't hear him. I can hear him. I cannot. No, can't hear him. I cannot I hear him. him. He froze. <laughs> okay, Rhonda, take over. Signs <laughs> you can do so Let's much go. with so little. <laughs> Sean, I don't know if you can hear us, He's but back. you are not coming through. Yeah, you're cutting in you out. A brief moment. If you message him, he'll probably see that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right. Whew. That was so Hang on a second, y'all. He said run to take over. He yeah. left. He <laughs> Jeremy left, so said run to take it. over. Mm. Yeah, he'll be back. Um, let me watch the waiting room, too, because he's got me as the host. It's interesting. Gonna... It's interesting that about the time we ha we have conversation about values. <laughs> Rhonda, you're freezing as well. Your video is, just so you know. Cheers. Isn't that interesting? Trying to take us both out. Hang on. I think he's back. Yeah. Here he comes. Are you back, Sean? Is, am I still freezing? Sean, you're muted. Yes, you're still, you're starting to break up. How about now? Can you hear slack. me? There you yeah, you're good now. now. Okay. Yes. Sean, it's trying to take us both out because after you left, I got, I got had trouble. <laughs> so <laughs> value system. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and this is what happens when you start to, right, to, 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 to bring awareness to certain things and you start to change the energy frequency. And that's what everybody's doing here. That's what Laura was doing. That's what she did with her question. <clears throat> so Laura, does, does that help you with the question? Does, uh, let me ask this. Are you starting to see it, where you can identify your values a little better? Yes, much more. I was, I just, at, at the beginning, um, I guess I didn't know where, where to go, but you, you honestly guide me where everything I do is a value. Everything I hear, everything I eat, I smell, <laughs> everything. Everything. Everything you look at, every note you take. Yeah. Right? So you, you, you take, we could all listen to an hour of Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. I will guarantee you, I will, I will bet you my paycheck. Not one of us has written down the exact same notes. Yeah. We all show up in this world. We all show up in this world. And I promise you, I promise you, we don't see the world the same way. There's absolutely a snowball's chance in H-E double toothpicks that I can see the world the same way you see it. There's twins. There's twins who don't see the world the same way. There's families who have children. All, same mother, same father. If they got three kids, you can pretty much say that one kid is a messy kid, one kid's a neat kid, and the other one is kind of like left in the middle. It's just that way. And they're the same kids. This brothers and sisters, same parents. How's everybody so wildly different? It's because of the way they grow up and the value system they develop. Yeah. See, if they taught values in kindergarten and then they taught values in first grade and values in second grade and values in third grade, might the world be a little bit different? Here you are at your young age 
And the idea of values is still a little bit of a confusing conversation. There's people who are in their 50s and 60s on this call who values are a little bit of a confusing conversation. We're never taught the basic fundamentals. We go from a water breathing species to an air breathing species in the matter of a birth. We were one out of 500,000 sperm that made it to the egg. So we, 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 first of all, we, we, we win a race that's absolutely almost, un, it's unfathomable to, to race against half a million people and to win. And then we, then we turn into this water breathing species in the belly of our mom. And then instantly we come out and we turn into this, this air breathing species. We convert instantly in the matter of minutes by the time they suck out the water and spank us on the tuchus. And from there, and from there we, we beat the genius out of them. We just take the genius right out of them. Kids who are two and three years old who can daydream and see, mommy, I was talking to my friends. What friends? I have all of my imaginary friends. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, isn't that neat? And we're turning dolls and bears into tea drinking buddies. That's imagination. But yet when we go to school, that's called daydreaming. He's a daydreamer. He's a, he's, he's a daydreamer. And so we lose our values in being in joy, staying in joy. So as you start to look at everything, Laura, everything from your nail color to the shoes you put on, this is, this is, this is what I talk about when I do a training saying 98, 95, 96% of our beliefs were given to us. You didn't make that shirt. If you have anything holding your hair back, you didn't make that. If you have, if, if you have the, the nail polish, you didn't make that. You didn't, what if there was 13 other colors that were that shade of yellow? What made you pick that one? You go, I like this one. I value this energy. The notebook that's in front of you, the pens that you use. I like pens. I like very fine point pens. That's one of my values. I can't write with a big fat pen like 1.0. It's got to be 0.38. Those are my favorite pens, 0.38. I love the way it, ro it rolls onto my journal paper. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. So if I like the way it looks as I'm writing, it's funny how the energy I write changes a little bit different. Yeah. I got a new mic, right? So I, I, I purchased a new mic. And I would never, back in the day, I would never spend this kind of money on a microphone but now I value making sure that you got good sound. I brought all this stuff with me. Why would I bring this stuff with me? I could do it on my phone. I was just getting ready to go live on the phone because I value you having consistency in the sound of my voice. I value me sounding the same kind of, I want to be the, you get fries in Puerto Rico or fries in Washington state. They pretty much taste the same way because they use the same formula. So now as you go through the day, you're going to start looking at everything going, what do I value about that? And it'll mm -hmm. cause you to pause for a second. And that's a good thing. Yes. Does that help? And, oh, yeah, a lot. Okay. And he helps me, you know, teach my son as well because, yeah. And, and, um, and values always put us in a choice. Always, when we have values, Values give us a choice because there could be times where we do, we, we challenge our, we, we, we adopt our values for the higher good, right? We may, um, for guys, we may walk through puddles to go get an umbrella for our, for our, our significant other so that we can keep them dry. We'll ruin something that we value, right? A good pair of shoes to make sure we take care of our family. Well, but these were my favorite shoes. Yes, but they lost their value when a higher value showed up. So values can change instantly. It's do we choose to live from the highest one in the moment that best serves us? Great question. I'm I'm glad I brought you. I'm glad I brought you some value. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for the value. You bet. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Who's next? Daniela in Ohio. Good morning. Good morning, my love. When you said who's next, Mateo's like me. <laughs> He's like, I knew it. There we go. Morning, Tail. Morning. Hold on. There we go. Oh, here's my value. There you go. Absolutely. Oh, I just wanted to share some um, uplifting words I got from um, our pink robe lady yesterday. And I do have to admit, Kevin kind of got jealous. <laughs> Oh, I like your speaker. <laughs> That's so funny, Daniela. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, I tell you that all the time. Because, like, I was crying yesterday when I read your message. He's like, I tell you that all the time. I said, but it's different. You're my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> But Don't my, get Kevin mad at me. <laughs> but I do want to read you guys what I got from Rhonda. And can I show? Wait, hold on. Um, let's find Rhonda. You want to read it? It's right here. Right here. Where? Right here. If. If. You want me to do it? We can read together. Okay. Okay. Ready? Uh huh. Three, two, two, one. If you saw you through my eyes, you'd see how amazing you are inside and out. Okay, my turn. Uh huh. You are remark remarkable. Remarkably. Remarkably made and more powerful than you can imagine right now. Did you guys hear my message? Yep. Yeah. And that could that could be you saying it's a tale. Mm-hmm. And we don't really realize like how, what, what people see in you as much as you see, how much value you see in them. And it's, it's just crazy. Okay. Cause I used to say that all the time to Kevin. I'm like, if you could only see you through my eyes, there's a lot of things that you would appreciate about yourself and and he says the same thing to me. And it, it was funny last night because like just two days ago, he said the same thing to me that Rhonda said. And, and he just looked at me and he's like, uh, didn't I just say that to you? And you were just like, uh, oh, whatever. I'm like, uh, no. Yeah, get away. I'm going to pretend. Well, it, 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 also, it also is that phrase, right? You're never a prophet in your own land. And... So here, here's the tough part on you, Daniela. Those words are of great value from Rhonda, but the same words are not of great value from the person who's, who stands next to you. Ouch. Uh, you know, I love you. You're tough. So what if, what if all of a sudden the words, regardless of the source, had tremendous value? What if we never knew? What if we just saw, what if we walked up to a wall and on the wall it said, Daniela, you're more powerful and more, more, more remarkable than you ever thought possible. And you didn't know the source. Sometimes the source filters out the message. What if we started to sit and realize that every time everyone speaks to us, it is the most precious sound we've ever heard. I've had people cuss me out. Some of my students who get absolutely bent sideways when I have a conversation like this. 
but this is a surface. Con this is, I don't want to say this is a little deeper than surface, but when I, when you, <laughs> I love when you guys start saying he's coming for our necks. <clears throat> I haven't even come for your cuticles yet. <clears throat> I haven't even worked up from the tips of your fingernails yet. Hmm. <laughs> because in this moment, in this moment, there is nothing more precious than this moment. And if you're going to throw it away, I'm going to make sure you understand what you're throwing away. And I've had people get wildly threatened to get on their jets and come to my house. I go, come on, I'm in Texas. I got guns, baby. <laughs> so be aware of how we uh, of how we shift our value and we use our value filter to change our own state so have you gone back to kevin and said those words back to kevin no i have oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i'm your favorite I, I would encourage you to send those out in a text. If he's already gone from the house, tell mm -hmm. him, thank you. You're welcome. No, not to you. No, I, and, well, Mateo's also, I, thank you. So, but, but, be, but be aware of how, be aware of how we allow a filter of values to make something more valuable when it, when it really, Listen, I love Rhonda. We all love Rhonda. But her words should not be more valuable than Kevin's. I think that yeah, I'm, I I'm more of, or maybe I'm just trying to find an excuse, but um, when people that are around you, when they, I feel like they're like obligated to say certain things to you. And I'm like, okay, Kevin. Well, that's, that's the value. That's the value you're sitting under. That's the truth, as Rhonda would say, you're sitting under, that's probably not serving you. If you. So your value is that if you're close to me, you've got to say nice things. So that's a value you sit under. What if the value was as if, you're, if, if, if we're as close as we are, there should, never be a, there should never be a negative word. We should always be lifting each other up and of the highest value and of the highest energy. What if you sat under that value? Now when he, he says to you, you're amazing, you're remarkable. Thank you. Thank you for lifting my soul. And so are you. Some of you have been, some of you have maybe heard on, on a morning call or whatever, on a, usually on a weekend call, but I'll, I will say, I, and I've told you this before, I've even said it here, I love my family. And I've got some cousins and some other family members here. And Mason and Michelle will respond back without hesitation. I love my family. That's a value I sit under. Well, why would you say that in front of everybody? They're lucky they heard it. I'm not embarrassed about t saying I love my family. And this is all family that's here. And I'm waiting for one of them to say, as I say it, it's kind of, I'm doing a test, a fishbowl test. I love my family. I'm waiting for them to go, I love my family. Because if you think about it, don't they love their family? Yeah. Wouldn't they say they love their family? But what's happening is, is we think we're responding instead of professing. And when they say, I love my family, they're like, well, he's not in my family. He's not like my immediate family. So I really, I guess I can't respond to that. Why can't they just sing in unison like a prayer and say, I love my family? But we don't think that way. We don't operate out of that way. Wow, that sun is reflecting and I really look, I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Ooh. I look like, what's his name from? Um, oh, be nice now. I am gonna be nice. Um, <laughs> Twilight, he's all like listening. What's his name? The vampire dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> so does so I love the fact that you got the compliment from Rhonda. And I believe it's absolutely true. 
Thank I would you. encourage you to listen to how, how much joy that brought to you and then see how much joy, how, how can you change the value? What, have, what value might you need to adopt? You need to uh, review so that the next time Kevin says that, you feel even more energetically engaged with that statement as it comes from his energy than it does from Rhonda. Because I love you. I think you're amazing. You're absolutely incredible. It's just hard to like take compliments. I take, I guess. And it's like. So would it, you, would it be fair to say that's a value system you've been, you've been. Rhonda. He froze again. Yes, he did froze Your turn, again. Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> This way you come in. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, exactly what he's saying. I wrestle with this too, Daniela. I I wrestle with um, you'll find value when someone else says it to us. When a, a, a stranger, a perfect stranger, says something to you, you'll find value in that. Because I heard what you said a minute ago. I heard you say, yeah, but everybody that's around me and in my Again, life. Oh. <laughs> Everyone that's around me and, and oh, there he is. Hang on. Rhonda. Um, yes. Can, Can I say me? something? Oh, uh, you're breaking down. Go ahead, De go ahead, Eve. Go, yeah. Um, I feel. Hi, Vey. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Um, hello, everybody. I feel that also comes from a low value about ourselves. So we don't believe that those things that those people that are around us, they're telling us is true. And we keep going to the old story, rejecting those good things. And we want to hear them. We want people to tell us good things. But when they tell us, we block. Oh, so you just want to say it instead of like open your heart and receive it. Because that's your new story. Your new story is the person that said, yes, I am. I am that person. I am that wonderful. I am that, that good. And I am so thankful that you said it because that, you know, and, and it's about realizing and receiving and being aware of the new story that you have, the new story with values, high value about yourself. That's it. it Eve, I got to love you for saying that. I absolutely love you because one of the things we're just going to, we're going to get very physical here, not Kayla physical, but we're going to get very in the physical world. You have this amazing, beautiful face. You have this amazing, beautiful body. You have this amazing, beautiful life. But when I read your story about sleeping in the car, most people, did, most people would never even comprehend that. And seeing you in a Hooters outfit, right? And then taking an acting class on Saturdays and working two jobs, eight to two or whatever it was, and then, then or eight to four, 530, uh, and then six to 2 a.m. And then once you got, you, you, you got the next level, you didn't want to come home to a, to an apartment with an air mattress. Your values have always been in place. And now that we're, now that you've hit the high mark, the jealousy that others have because they don't know the rest of your story, they now get to see the rest of your story and they get to see the values you lived by and they, 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 become, they become worthy of your success. Most people think, people aren't worthy of their success. You are absolutely worthy of this success and more. Do y'all realize who just told, who just poured into Daniela? This is the woman three months ago, four months ago that wouldn't say boo on the call. Mm -hmm. And now she's teaching because that ability to teach has always been inside of her. That ability to speak with, with efficacy, with subtlety, 
that was the queen that spoke. That wasn't the warrior. It wasn't the magician. It wasn't the lover. That was the queen that just spoke to you, Daniela. And she was, and she was letting you know that the kingdom is fine with you in it and you deserve to be the queen of your own kingdom. Again, I, I sit sometimes and I, and I will go back and listen to these recordings and I listen to the vibration of the conversation. I listen to, if you listen to the words that come out, did you hear how she even interrupted? Excuse me, excuse me, Rhonda. Can I say something? That's, that was a queen. That wasn't a warrior. Uh, excuse me. Hey, listen, I, I, I want to say something. Just the vibration, the invitation of the interruption. Very soft. I don't know if you all, you all may start to hear more of that. It's when you begin to listen to the, to the breaths in between the words, into the silence in between the syllables that you really start to understand people and you can tell where the conversation is coming from based upon the sound of the words. So Eve, thank you for sharing that. That's huge. Thank you, Eve. Thank you guys. Daniela, does that help? Yes, of course. Thank you guys so much. Cool. Uh, let's go to uh, Delia in Miami. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Delia. Good morning, gang. Good morning. As you were speaking at the beginning of the call about values, the question has been in my head probably for the past month because as you post what is your secret sauce? I had no other way to go but to think what values do I hold? And since I've always been a giver, I had questioned the pros and the cons of being a giver. And I went back into my childhood many times thinking what gave me the value of giving? What did it? So as you were talking today, I said, well, if I have the chance to speak and I'll try to say it as fast, as, uh, not as fast, as brief as I can, I have two recollections that I think all of us who are in the call who say, well, what are my values? Why do I do this? Or why does it serve me or not? it's gonna make it easier for us to open up and see all the values that we have about everything in our lives. So the first value that I acquired, I believe it was the, the value of giving and the value of more. There's always more. I was about four years old. I was sitting with my mom at, in, in her home in Ciego de Avila. Come away, Cuba. It was like mid afternoon, three or four. My mother goes inside and grabs my Italian porcelain Russian doll. Uh, this is back in probably 1956, 57. And she brings it to me so I can sit on my rocker, the child's rocker, with my doll. And then something happens, and mom runs inside, and I stay on the porch by myself out of somewhere comes this uh group of girls and they asked me for the doll they were older than me and they said can we hold your doll it's so beautiful can we keep it and i said yes because of course at that age they're older and i don't know yet the value of retaining so i gave the doll away so when my mom comes outside, she goes, where's your doll? And I said, these, these kids came by and they asked for the doll and I gave it to them. 
And she goes, I can't believe you did that. That is a very expensive doll. And it's like, I looked at mom and then she didn't say anything else. So a week or two go by in my mind because this is a recollection. And what do, what do I get from her father, my grandfather? A bigger porcelain Russian doll, the ones that when the doll walked, the eyes will move from left to right. I mean, you're all very young here, but you can Google this and look at the doll after I finish and the call finishes. So I get a bigger doll, I get a bigger prize, and it's like the universe rewarding my kindness, which I had no idea that I had. Yeah. This is not me. This is, okay, the vessel. I'm not saying that I'm great and that I'm a giver and blah, blah, blah. This is God using me to show what giving can do. And then the other thing is when I left Cuba, and I turned 13, this is the second vision. When I turned 13, uh, a week after my birthday, I left the country with my mother, my father, and my sister. And my grandfather had gifted me, my, my, the other grandfather had gifted me a fountain 22 karat gold pen. And I was a writer since the age of seven. I used to write letters to all my family, abroad and all over the, the island. I used to write letters every, every week. I always like to tell stories and recollect, you know, outings and whatever. And my grandfather knew that I love writing, so he, get, he gifted me this 22 karat pen, which I cherish with my life. So out of all the stuff that we could take out of Cuba, there were six changes of clothes, my mother put on me a pair of diamond earrings that were given to me at my birth, and I placed the pen on my purse. I had a purse because I was 13. So when I go through aduana, what is aduana called in English, honey? Customs. Customs. Thank you. When I go through customs in Havana, Rancho Boyeros Airport, which is now called Jose Martí, they open my purse, they grab the pen, and they keep it. So I said, okay, at least I'm, I'm being free in a few hours. They looked at my ears. I think they're gonna remove my earrings, but they didn't. And when I get to Portugal, because we had a, a flight that uh, had uh, stops in Portugal, Paris, and then we ended up in uh, Spain. When we stop in Portugal, we're having breakfast. And after breakfast, we walk through the mall with my dad and my mom. And in the old days, in the, in the 60s, this was 1967, you did a lot of window shopping. So my father is walking next to me, and we come, at, we come in front of a window in a store that is holding wallets, pens, uh, keychains, and this is all like signature stuff, okay? So I'm not even thinking about the pen that I lost. I forgot about that. I was excited that I was out of Cuba, to tell you the truth. I was excited that we made the flight from Havana to Isoris Island. And my father looks at the window and says, I see that you like that pen over there. And we didn't have any money in our pockets, by the way. In 1967, you left the island penniless. I know that that looks hard for you to grasp, but you could not take any money or a, there were no credit cards in the old days. And that's another story that I'll tell another day, but what happened was he says, you will get another pen like that. So he taught me there, again, the value of releasing and then receiving, that that's always going, releasing and receiving, releasing and receiving. So, and that is the two stories that I want to share today. Uh, I would leave the other one. Chuck is going to ask me the other one another time. I would be happy. I think that we have great value for all of us. And it was very valuable for me to remember this. <laughs> it's the world moving. It is what makes the world move when we release and receive. Thank you.
Thank you, Delia. I appreciate you. That's awesome. Again, you know, these are stories that you read about or that you watch in documentaries that you hear about uh, the exodus of Cuba. You just got to hear it firsthand. You heard a piece of history firsthand that wasn't in a National Geographic video. It wasn't in uh, some, some YouTube, you know, hidden video on Gaia. This is somebody that was sitting here and, and understanding how values can be woven into you from a very early age. And it's still serving her well, this idea of giving and receiving. So thanks, Delia. I appreciate it. Uh, Latoya, let's go to Latoya. Latoya's got her hand up. Hey, how you doing, Sean? How you all are doing? <laughs> yes, you know, I'm so, I'm so grateful for you bringing this up about value because I, I had got an aha moment, Sean. And I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of fixing my daughter grilled cheese sandwich. She's one on one. So I'm, I'm right here in the kitchen. So I, my question is this once you learn to, to value something, right? Does it, it increases a person's intention? Because I strongly believe, you know, how to be like, you know, what's your intention of doing this? And and if we don't see the value, we it, it'd be a uh, kind of like a not like an issue. It'd be like searching what is the intention, what is the intention. But if we see the value. I strongly believe that it increases the intention. It increases the intention of why why. Why are we doing it? Or why we love the love? Or why we see gratitude? And me, you know, I value gratitude even more. And I'm glad that you have it, like, that we did it every day, that we sent out gratitude messages. At first, I was like, man, this going to oh, my God, people going to get tired of me sending gratitude messages. <laughs> like, I, I, at first, I couldn't fathom doing it. Like, I, I started with three people. I'm like, okay. And I'll get responses. I'm like, okay, okay. But then... Over time, I started to value it even more. So it was like, okay, so now with the intention of feeling good every day and spreading that joy, that increased the intentions of why I'm sharing that gratitude. So it's not just doing it because you said send three gratitude messages. It's more like the intention, like, okay, I know I could do more. So I, I, I send out about 20 to 30 gratitude messages every day. <laughs> literally and i know i could do more so yeah and, and there are other ways i could do it too so uh, i just want to thank you sean because I, I learned to value that um uh, we just value even the, what they call the smallest things but even the smallest thing leads to big big things a, a huge impact that ripple effect so i uh, thank you so much for that well you're welcome latoya and thank and thank you for being somebody who who values that <clears throat> who values that and has an understanding of it because yes it does change our intention when you okay, when okay. you increase the value of something you want it more right it's kind of like air right now nobody's really concerned about the air <sighs> but hold me right. underneath water hold me underneath water for two minutes air becomes pretty important right <clears throat> yes it's what uh, i think jim Rohn said or maybe zig ziglar said it I think Zig Ziglar said it. Money's not important, but but it's right up there with oxygen. When you need it, that's all you can think about. Wow. So I appreciate you uh, looking at your values and becoming aware of it because it's absolutely, uh, the more we value something, the more we will do something, right? Think about when we're dating. And when we're dating somebody and we want to, we want to uh, uh, gain their affections, Mm -hmm. We'll buy flowers, we'll buy jewelry, we'll wash the car, we'll do all of these things, <laughs> right? And then yeah. we get married and it's like, pfft. wow, because wow. things change. We, we, our values get adjusted, right? We get, we, we, we hear all of the time, guys, right? Well, when you get married, you know, to, to go towards um, some ideas is that things change once you get married. Well, that's only changes because if you, ch you change your values of it. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. I mean, I just learned that just starting with gratitude. I, I learned that it increases my attention and everything else. And so uh, I'm going to make that a note to myself, you know, the journal that, well, I can do that right now 
that um, what what do I value? What do I value? And, and when and, you start, why? You, you you start to play it against each other, like we do the list of your goals, and all of a sudden you'll find your highest value. Wow, that's amazing, Sean. You you is a man. I'm telling you right there. <laughs> They're like their therapy for network marketing professionals. <laughs> Well, so I always say undevelopment, undevelopment. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm her head not now. up, but I'm on her. Hey, Kayla, what's up, girl? I don't want to talk. <laughs> you okay? No, I'm not. Okay, what's up, girl? Hello, everybody. We just touched too many. Ah. We just touched. Today's conversation has been like good but hard. <laughs> and it makes me think about. All the things that we go through in life, um, how they make us value us. And I, and you, I mean, I, I got so many thoughts going on right now, too fast. And I'm not even, I mean, like right now, I mean, I wrote some right now about values, about and I was thinking um, when I decide when the war came in Panama in 1989 from the United States, right? When it looks like something real happened in Panama, to me, like, well, that was like my, my way of freedom. Because at that point, uh, my whole life, I was planning to run out of Panama. And, and I remember uh, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find my way. As soon as, as soon as I hit 18 okay. years old, I'm going to find my way out, right? And what was my value at that point? I mean, you got me thinking about like each part of my life. What was my, my value at that moment? how I see life and value the most. And I think at that moment, when I decide to become a prostitute, so I can, so I can get a man, an American man. So that was war, the war. There were so many Americans in Panama. So I decided to become a prostitute just because I knew that what, to me, and that was cool, um, get married with one of the Americans in Panama. So at that point, being a prostitute wasn't that bad. I mean, it, 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 was, it was fine. It was fine because I was trying to accomplish something and it was to get married just, just to live and live this life of so, many, so much abuse, right? And how that value at that point was so important for me that becoming a prostitute wasn't that bad. But, and I did it. And, and, and I, like I tell my story sometimes, I didn't get one proposal, I get seven proposals to get married. So I was good at it. At whatever you want to call it, I was good. Because my value at that point, I mean, it was more, it, Yes, in sex and doing the best part of me. I mean, that was my value. And, and, and you got me thinking about all this. Because then I get married. And I get proposed to young people or people my age. And here I am, I get married to a man that was 16, 14 years older than me. And I wonder what I choose. Because I have another secret. And there was 
they were my age. And what was my value at that point? <laughs> old men, because yeah, my stepfather, I'm real old. But what was my really value? What I see in an old person that hurt me so much, but at the same time, I picked up it. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about all this, and it's hitting me real hard. Because uh, then he started to treat me like, like a queen. I mean, like a queen. He, he treated me so, so many good things, and I didn't accept none of them. Because to me, I didn't accept none of the good things. And I, I'm, you got me thinking now, what was my value about me at that point of not receiving good things? Or, or my purpose was just one and I accomplished it and that's why I go to United States and, and, and yes, that's how I learn English and don't ask me how I talk to them when I didn't talk that much English, don't ask me that. So you don't want to hear the answer. Um, but yeah, they say sex life, sex talk is universal so don't say anything else. Uh, and that's how I learned English and that's how I did so many things. But then here is a person that was like treating me like a and I didn't accept that. Because I didn't believe a man treating you nice. That wasn't in my world. And worse, if it was an old man um, trying to treat me nice, I mean, that doesn't exist. That, that was not in my life, that wasn't right. And to make a long story short about that part is I started to have all these relationships uh, and all this stuff, right? And, and, and I did stand in front of him and I tell him, I mean, you are so good to me that you deserve somebody. That's what, and I remember that now. I remember when I said, you deserve somebody. It's like, what was my value about me, right? And after that, I started to have all these relationships that at that point, at that point, they were they were fun. But it was a bad relationship. I mean, and you know all the other part of the story. I become a, a, a stripper and I become this and then. But at the same time, I have four jobs. In the United States, I was working four or five jobs. What was my value, I mean, about, and then you're talking about those things, Sean, about also when, when you go through so much having nothing and working your ass off so you can have something, but now nobody give it to you. I mean, you really got me right now, like in control right now, like to write down every single thing that happened to me. And now when I was little, when I decide to just, take control, I think I've always been taking control. I mean, uh, that's another story. And then when I decide to have my kids because I decide to have kids by myself. I mean, I don't know how that was gonna happen, but I thought it happened, but it didn't, but I have my kids, right? And I had my first son, it was mine. It was mine. And I said before, I picked this man because he was really nice that I was in Panama. I picked this man because he had green eye, and my son came out looking exactly like him but the green eye. I mean, I was like, no. I mean, that was what I want, and my son looks just like him but the green eyes, right? But he was mine. I said he was mine. And I didn't care at that point for them. And then I have a second one, right? Um, but with another man, because my value about having a man or a dad, it wasn't that strong. <laughs> From different men, it was all right because they were my kids and my values about a kid growing with their, with their father wasn't that big, right? But then my, my value changed, and you guys are thinking about all this because at that point my value was kids don't need no fathers. They are right with their mom, right? If they want to be, that's fine. If they don't want to be, that's fine too. But then after I see all this struggling, probably 
with me or make what I will say more see them like um, mom, everybody gathered that, we don't have all that, blah, 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 all this stuff, right? Why you get along with them, but they not with you? Why you guys are so nice with each other, but you guys not together? Seeing those things happen, then I decide to have another kid, but now with a different value. I want a family. And how, how, I mean, and that's the part that really that also hitting me, because how your value change and it can destroy your life too. And what I'm getting is value means, it looks like the word value means something huge, big, and positive. It sounds like that, but the value that you will have also can destroy you. Because here I am thinking now, I didn't do right, my value wasn't that right, so I need to have a family, I need to have a kid that have his father. And I started to do, and Sean knows this, and I started to accept anything, anything. Before it was a different story, I don't accept no shit for no man. A man just look at me, or I'm bad, and I said, that's it, I don't need that, bye, right? But then my life changed, and now here I am saying, I need a man because I need a family. I need to have a kid. So he has his family together, all this nice dinner together, all these things together, all this daddy cards and daddy's day, blah, 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 right? And then I started to accept all this mistreating and I started to accept to a man do to me whatever he wants and everything was acceptable just because I was protecting a value of having a family together and having it, my kid with his father. And it's, it's a real deep, I mean, subject because you can talk about value and, have, and say, wow, the value of having a family is huge and big. But here is a woman that because want to keep that value, it was destroying me. You don't want to know all the things that I took, all the shit I took just because I want my baby to stay with his father. And given that my values in some point, I don't want to say this loud, but I'm going to say it because um, I don't want you guys, when I say sex, you say like, oh, she don't have no value about sex, right? Uh, but now you know, I mean, so if I say something about sex, don't think I'm gonna value. I got good value about sex, right? But the point is, given that I can transport my life where, where, I, where sex was nothing to me, I can take anything from anybody, from any man, because I can get in the point where sex is nothing, even though sometimes it means a lot. So yes, Sean, just start these things today and I start to write down, I mean, and these are just a couple of things. The word value, I mean, you always say, you have to love yourself, you, you always tell me um, you have to believe that you, val you value a lot, right? But this is the first time I really start to think and write down what was, how I was, and what was my value at the point where I was doing this, when I was doing that. And it really make a change. And yes, it hit me. I mean, it, 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 it's like it's so many things in my mind right now. And, and, and I want to say like, like it's a bad thing. I mean, no, it's a good thing, but it really got, got I don't know about the rest, but it got me thinking every step of my life. What I did this, what I did that. I mean, and nothing that you can do, can you? Because I realize and jump in my life. It's nothing that you can do it. Already happened, you can change it, right? But you can change from now on. 
And I understand that too, because I was living in a world that I wish different. I wish that I didn't, I wish that I did this, I wish that I was, you know, and I understand that those don't value, right? It makes no sense, right? But I don't know if I say it right now, in, I mean, I'm not saying anything for any conclusion, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying everything that's going through my mind. And well, share this, Kayla. As you go through this, because you're, you're kind of watching the movie from the director's cut view versus the audience view. And you're going to go back and you're going to see some huge things that maybe you will see differently, but at the time they were perfect. So don't go back and beat yourself up for the moment that it was, because it got you to hear. It got you to hear every one of those shifts in value, every one of those values that you decided that you're like, how could I even think that? How, how is that even possible? Don't beat yourself up for that because it was possible because it happened at the moment. The question you get to ask yourself now is that value served me then, does it serve me now? And if it serves me now, use it. And if it doesn't, you don't get to use it. You now get to teach it. You just taught so many women on this call who may not have been through the hell in a handbasket you've been in, but you've given them, they can relate to you. They understand what you shared and you gave them strength to look at their own values. That's the only thing we can do when we teach. There's practice what you preach or preach what you practice, right? And so you're preaching what you've practiced, that you've gone through these ideas, you've gone through these awakenings, you've gone through these, these moments, yet now you get to go back and look at it through a different set of lenses called value lenses. And you're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? You were thinking the, the highest value at the moment, right? Young Panamanian girl gets out, of, gets out of the U.S. Do you know how many who didn't get to leave Panama? Right? Thousands didn't get to leave Panama. Thousands had a rougher life there. You get to now come back. You're, you're, you're changing the economy of Panama. Do you realize all of this? I don't know that you've, I just, this just downloaded to me. I don't know that you've thought that the fact of the hell that you went through, you are now bringing back an economy that, to Panama that would have never existed had you stayed. You're the proverbial prodigal child who's come back to Panama, come back home to bring values of integrity, values of opportunity. You gave people thank food at Thanksgiving that would have never had food. You'd have never been able to do that had you stayed in Panama. You're changing the economy of your country. And you don't have to shake your tail feather to do it. <laughs> You're doing it with your heart. You're doing it with your hands. You're doing it with your head. You're bringing so much value to your country, to your community. Can you imagine that? How many of us get to say they can impact the economy of their country? Now, I know this is hitting her kind of sideways right now because this is not something that Kayla is wired for is to receive this kind of, wait a minute, what? No, what? No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm the chicken lady. I'm the rooster lady. <laughs> But no, you change, you're changing the economy of your country because of your value system. Sean? Yes. Can I connect to Kayla? Um, I just wanted to say that I have a cousin in Panama right now and um, he works in network marketing and his parents are living with him with him but they don't they're not working right now and um, they've come from venezuela my dad's from venezuela and you said on a call that you have a team of a thousand people you build people every day and you said how you know you had a day where you're like oh i can't this so much is going on but they were they treated you like family because you've made a family you've showed people in panama that you can wake up every day and you can build a thousand people. That's amazing. That is unreal. Thank you, Jessica. My, my, my cousin, he does, he works so hard. I have a cousin in Miami, I have a cousin in Panama, and they are working so hard 
for my family in Venezuela that have no food, no water. I can't call them on WhatsApp. I can't say, hello, how are you? There's nothing. There's nothing there. There's no GoFundMe. There's no, there's no way of me trying to help yeah. my uncles and aunties. But you are changing the world right now and you don't even realise and yeah a team of a thousand people that's do you know how many impact uh, how many lives that impacts and you don't even know where they live you have no idea they could live in russia they could have grandparents in i don't know they could have nieces and nephews in switzerland when when i want to send money i think where's where's western union where's this where's that what can i do i want to give something i don't have a lot but i want to give something and you're doing that for a thousand people that's so many people so thank you thank you oh, welcome and um, yes i mean and you sean yes i mean I, I i didn't expect that one coming of course um and it's true i mean in and and just three months ago facing i mean facing a doctor telling you prepare everything because i don't give you more than five weeks that changed your value too i mean that changed my it's like i, I didn't give a damn about what i did or who i was or whatever i mean it changed everything Facing that is like things that they were bothering me so much just for somebody telling you that you only got five weeks. Uh, changed, totally, totally changed. And, now, and that's why I understand now when you always give us that example of if somebody, you put somebody on the roof and, you know, and, and now I thought I understood that and that's, it made me realize how many things we think we understand and we don't, or maybe not to that those levels that you probably want us to, but at least some kind of level. Because um, when I heard that three months ago, I was like, no. But at the same time, it took me a month or two months to come out of, come out of that, you know, depression, and now I wake up like, like stronger, you know, and then when you wake up so strong or you feel strong, right? That you can conquer everything. You can do everything. You can, anything, nothing is, is going to stop you. And, and you hear things like this morning. It's like, you don't allow yourself like, no, Kayla, Nina went down. No, Kayla, don't get depressed, you know. But at the same time, it's like, well, look, the, try to understand. It's, it's like you got more people talking in your mind, right? Well, more Kayla's talking in your mind, right? All the different Kayla in your life are talking, right? And I mean, it, it's, it's been deep today. It's been real deep. In, in the good way, you know, uh, because it could be deep in the bad way. Uh, but yes, uh, values, I mean, values, I, I think we don't realize exactly our behaviors in everything. It's like you were telling, um, what was her name, the girl with the nails, right? Uh, and you know me <laughs> about my nails too, now that I can't get my nails done. And you guys see me with all this energy, but at the same time, though, you don't, I mean, you don't want to see when I get my nails done because it's like extra triple energy because if I use my hand, but now I use my hand, but I put it down fast because I don't got my nails, right? And, and those colors that I use are bright like you know, and how my value changed too, because before I was like the black hair, just that. And then you, all of a sudden you see me changing, like I, all the colors mention it, I have it on my hair, right? 
and how and, and I didn't realize that all those behaviors are values. Are values. I mean, I get up so happy at 6.15 every day to listen to you and to see everybody here. Not just listen to you, Sean, no, no. It's to see everybody here, right? And, and, uh, and before it was like, well, it, I've been through different phases, right? Because the, when we first started, I was like, yeah. And then a couple times, I was like, oh my God. You know, I've been through all that and I say it loud because, I mean, maybe you guys are going through some that sometime and, and it's fine, like Sean said, and it's okay, right? And now it's like yesterday, last night, given that I, oh, I value exercise now more before I value exercise because I want to come, I want to go back to that stripper body. That's what, I, that was the value I put to the exercise before. <laughs> Three months ago, here I am putting value to the exercise every day because I want my lungs to be healthy. I want my health because I don't want to face another doctor telling me something like that. Today I get up with so much pain in my legs and my arms, and I said, "Gosh, I never feel so such a good pain because I'm scared of the lung pain. That pain that I have on my lungs." Uh, weeks ago, it was awful. Not because it hurt, it because it was facing me to death. Today I got that pain in my leg, and I'm like, yeah, I'm working out. I'm going. I want more pain. I'm, but it's a different pain the way I look at it. But now I want. I do exercise because I want health. And. It's so, so true. I mean, it's so true how value, and we don't realize the meaning of the word value. We think value are just, we, we take it for granted, the word value, right? And, and well, that's, that was good, what was going on to me and Sean, you always seeing everything. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna talk because I'm, I'm a disaster today. Um, but thank you, Sean, because you're teaching us that too. Not just to look or see, just you're teaching us to observe too, right? And well, you brought us tremendous value today, Kayla. <laughs> and for that, I appreciate you. And I, I, and I can always, here's one of the things I value in our relationship. I can always count on you to serve. We may argue, we may fight, you may talk about me behind my back and in front of my face, <laughs> but when we, but, but as we communicate, the level of value we bring to each other is pretty important. So I appreciate that. And I knew for you to continue to show up and your camera be on, there was a part of you that was needing some attention. So I appreciate you. I love you tons. Yay. Um, RBP, are you still there? Because I'm on my phone. I can't see everybody. Yes. You, you want to know the hands up? No. Um, I, I, I've actually got to go. So oh, okay. uh, I still do a little bit more prep for the, uh, the, the secret sauce for at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock here time, 2 o'clock central time. Um, what would you get from this morning? I thought, I, well, let's, let's switch gears. I feel no, just, as, as you as you hang on to that, hang on. Um, uh, a R E R has a, a question. L I R three, yeah. What's your question, my jump off? Okay, so one of my questions is: I know that you get on some of the calls with I am um, and Nano. So yep. one of the things I struggle with um, with taking watching the go lives or even like hopping on Neno's morning calls or any Zoom calls in particular, I have a hard time taking notes. Um, I try to stay very engaged in it so I can like take in all of the information. Um, and I'm wondering if there is any advice 
that you can give me to be a better note taker because I do want to succeed and I am with the business as well as trading and I've been in it for about a month but um it's a lot of information for me to expect myself to understand everything anyways but I am struggling a lot with taking notes okay so the reason you're the, the and and thank you for for asking that question that's a great question because it does relate around values so here's the thing as you get ready to go on to any event any zoom any training call any listening to any audio books on tape any of that stuff ask yourself what three things do i need right now to take my business to the next level and what you're doing is you're activating something called the RAS in your brain, the reticular activating system. It's that what you look for, you will find. Otherwise, there's a phenomenon known as intentional blindness. And you are intentionally causing yourself to not see the little secrets, the little nuggets you need. So therefore you get distracted and you do something about it. You write it down, but as soon as you start to write it down, there's another nugget that gets said that you think is more important. And therefore now you get frustrated because you didn't hear that one. And you that's didn't exactly that. my problem with taking notes. And, and the reason that I know that and we've never spoken before is because you haven't decided what you want to get from the call. When you go to an Italian, do, what kind of food do you like? Everything. Okay, give me <laughs> favorite. I like Indian. I've been craving Indian lately. So if you go to an Indian restaurant, what, what, what would you normally look for on the menu? You, you know they're a good Indian restaurant if they have what particular food item? Well, I really like butter chicken. That's pretty, um, I guess, basic, but, it, but certain restaurants good, cook it different. Right. There's good butter chicken and there's great butter chicken. Right? Absolutely. Oh, so that's your value. So you understand butter chicken. I know this sounds crazy, but you could, <laughs> Italian, you could go to an Indian restaurant and you could ask, tell me how your butter chicken is. And if they don't say a particular way they cook it or in the preparation, you go, yeah, don't order that. That's not going to be good. I've had that kind before. It's second rate. Okay. So when you go to sit down at, and you go to Nano's call, my call, any Zoom call, any training, you watch stuff in the back office of your office, ask what three things do I need right now to take my business to the next level? Do I need to understand a particular formula? Do I need to learn how to communicate? Do I need to learn how to, because then the brain will only look for that. So for me, before I start my business, I really want to understand more of the trading part because most people that want to get into the business are getting in the business with the intention of knowing how to trade. The business comes along with it, in my opinion. I got into it because I wanted to learn to trade, but right. I realized there was an opportunity to do the business. So I haven't necessarily pursued so much the business aspect yet because I'm still learning the trading and I have people asking questions about the trading that I don't feel comfortable in a way having people join my business if I can't give them all the proper information to a degree if that makes sense. So do you think the questions that people are asking that there's that there's a video somewhere in the system that would answer those questions? All those videos have information in there. So I couldn't really be specific with one video. No, no, no. I'm saying, my, no, listen to my question. Okay. I asked you a question about trading. Do you think uh -huh. there's possibly a video in your back office that would answer that question? Absolutely. So then you don't need to know any of it. So geez, all I know is, listen, I can point you to, I can point you to a video and you can get your questions answered. Okay. Fair you're, enough. You're trying to be the resource. You're trying to be the source, be the resource. The source is your back office. I don't know the ingredients in my company's product. I have 30,000 people on my team. I don't know the ingredients in my company's product. I don't know the compensation plan more than three levels deep. I don't, nobody who's joining me needs to know the comp plan more than three levels deep. I never explain the comp plan more than what you do on the very first day. Okay. So start with what you want. Start with the thing that you need. Start with the information you need. If I could really learn this, it would be awesome. And I promise you the next training that you go to, the next video you watch, anything you're looking for, you will find and you won't be frustrated. And what I've been doing also when I hop on um, Nano's calls and as well yours, I um, 
often journal in between the calls and I write down anything that, you know, has resonated with me and that I feel is important. So I, I've done that. Neno's one year anniversary was the first time I journaled. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Um, but okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time. I know you said you had to go. I appreciate it. Yeah, I thank you. I appreciate you. Have an amazing day. And I, I hope your note taking becomes easier and effortless because you appreciate that will show up just as quick. Thank you. I sent you also a message on Facebook. So whenever you have a chance, it's no rush. Okay. I'll look for thank it. You. All right. RBP. Hey. Hey. So that was actually pretty good timing because I was wrapping up the thoughts of my notes from today. And so here's a few questions that I got from this. The first question I asked is, what is it that you seek? What are you seeking? And do your values line up with what you're seeking? And if they don't, then there is a place to meditate. Because if your values are other than what you seek, you'll never obtain what it is you seek because your values will keep you from it. Because values are strong and they'll, they'll take precedent over what you seek because of how you sit in those values. So am I willing to be prepared for anything that hijacks my values? And what does, what does that look like? What does the hijacking of your values look like? And is it, a value that needs to be hijacked is it a value that needs to be hijacked and replaced with a different value and what does it look like to remain in my values that i don't want to be hijacked and that are different than someone else that comes around speaking into me because i you know i love you to death sean but if you have values that are different than other than what i'm seeking i don't want to take and let you hijack my values because you bring value to me i can still appreciate the value you bring to me, but I don't have to replace that and accept your value if it doesn't line up with what I'm seeking. I can glean knowledge from you and hear your values and respect your values, but I don't have to take those on. Just because you know, you're the keeper of all these amazing secrets we like to hear, doesn't mean I have to take those values. Doesn't mean anybody has to take those values. It's the same thing with what I'm saying right now. You can still hear value from it. Doesn't mean you have to accept my values. So are there, are there values I need to change or exchange for a different value will line up with what I'm seeking? So this is a great conversation to line you out on what might be tripping you is what you're seeking and what you value, the value you sit under might be so different that this might be your tripping point. And this could be something that is keeping you from going to that success that you're wanting if your values aren't lining up with the success that you're seeking. So I've stumbled across that multiple times. What I'm seeking, what I choose to seek, what I know is, seems like a, a, my dream destiny, some of the values I've set under don't serve me well. And they don't serve for what I'm seeking. But I've had those values all my life that they're hard to lay down. So then it becomes, I'm holding hands. Some people have said, you can't hold hands with Jesus and date the devil. The values are different. And you'll never do anything except get pulled in between and pulled apart. So... I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, what is it that you seek? And if the values you line up with, line up with what you seek, then have a plan in place or have some thoughts in place to never let those values get hijacked. Or if some of the values you're sitting under don't line up with what you seek, are you flexible enough to let those values change? And what does that look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? How does that change? So I think you, I think this conversation stumbled upon for me for sure 
some areas where there's some blocks where I can't seem to get past. And it's that growth point of what am I seeking and, and do the values support that? So there you go. It, it seems like a very simple conversation. Values. Values. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. It is so wired into us. And it is such a deep conversation that it, it's a Passover. It's a mm -hmm. Passover topic in training. You know, we have week one that we just, we're, we're, today is day seven of week one of the Secret Sauce Academy. And today we're going into values. People thought they were coming up for a breath of air. <laughs> but isn't that interesting? You know, a, a five letter, plural, six letter word that we throw around so easily. Most of the time, those things are the, are the things that are pivotal. But we pass over them. Our brain just skips over them. And what's interesting there is... We don't give value to value, the word value. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what has been programmed in us, or what little ploy of the enemy is it to make us go just step over the real important things? and just go, ah, oh, that's just something small. So then it makes me wonder, every time I hear, ah, oh, it's something small, that might be a red flag for me to go, hold up. I might better take a better look at that. So is that a red flag to go, hey, it looks small, might be something you need to dive into. And how many times have we seen that on this phone call? We take something really small and it changes the whole trajectory of everything in your genetic makeup. And values is a genetic makeup. A lot of times values are passed down from generation, generation, generation. And you ask somebody, you know, it's like that old saying, a lady was preparing a pot roast and she cut off the two ends and then she put it in the pot and her daughter goes, mom, I, I wanna cook a pot roast like you. Why do you do that? Well, my mom did that. Well, why did mom do that? I don't know. So she went to her grandmother and she said, grandma, why did you cut off both ends of the pot roast? And she goes, well, 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 my mother did that. And she was lucky enough to have a great grandmother alive. And she went to her great grandmother. And she was like, why did grandma and mom cut off the ends of the pot roast? Like you, why did you do that? She goes, oh, cause my pan wasn't big enough. That's the only reason pot roast was getting cut off. But everybody did it because that's how they thought it would taste good. So these values do the same thing you end up with a value and you don't know why you have it. And then when you have a phone call like this, you sit under it and you go, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Why in the world am I believing that still? And it doesn't serve you in the trajectory of your dream destiny. So then, this, then the conversation is how to let that go, which I'm, I'm, curious to to look at the workbook the 20 page flipping 20 page workbook that sean's got ready for i'm curious to look at that because i i bet that will take my mind on that that journey as to what it looks like to let go of that value and i've been on that journey now for almost 18 months and there's a fight that comes in your mind when someone challenges your values yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes, do I fight for it or do I let it go? So this is, I'm like Kayla, this call is way deeper because I'm sitting over here going, I had a fight with so-and-so back in, you know, 1990, whatever, that, that has no value. And it was just because of a value I set up. So. We got lots of questions over here. Lots of interesting things going through my mind. And I'd be curious if there's any guys left on the phone, if, if this is hitting you as deep, <laughs> because I'm not saying that values are, are gender specific, but I think it's the way that sometimes that females see things in a, in a different light than, than guys. Cause that would be a whole nother conversation of values and, um, 
Yeah, women are definitely yeah. keyed in. Sure. But you know, it's interesting that you say it like that, Sean, too, because the, the women and guys, I don't, I don't mean any, any disrespect by this. I hope it comes out the way I want it to come out. Sean can clean it up if it doesn't. Women are the heartbeat of the family. Mm -hmm. They just are. The, if I get up and I start doing serious exercise every single day at this time, you know what my family ends up doing? The same thing. So the women are the heartbeat of the family. So we are dialed into this because oftentimes I can't tell you how many times my husband does something or say something and my, my daughter will question him and I'll go, don't question your father. You just need to do what he's asked you to do because I'm reinforcing his values. Again, it's the heartbeat of the family. So we are dialed in. It is curious. I would be curious to ask questions of the single fathers to see how values play in their world so kayla hit the nail on the head and i'm kind of right there with you kayla it, it, it'll kind of piss you off about the whole this is a this is an interesting conversation and it's freaking about values who would have thought i i, I gotta tell i know how important they are and i've had an emotional life I didn't realize how emotional it would get in this conversation. So yes, well, he asked if we would do another call on values. Yes, we will dive. We'll go deeper into values. We'll, we'll dive deep. We'll dissect this because this is a fundamental piece to all awakening, to all getting out of our own way. It's not that anything, we can do anything and everything based upon our value system. Wars happen because of values. Peace happens because of values. Fights happen because of values. Reconciliation happens because of values. So, yes, we will do continue to have this conversation. I, I'm, I'm, in, I, I'm in awe that it's of this important that because I know everybody's in, in their own company, <clears throat> that this would be a conversation that their leaders would have. I may have given credit where credit's not due yet. So Rhonda, can you close us with a blessing? <laughs> I'd love to we'll wrap it up right quick. Heavenly father, thank you for today. Thank you for uncovering the simple things. It's all very simple and we, we muddle it up and we get it all confused. Thank you for uncovering a simple word. Father, help us to see the values that you have in place for us, that you would like us to hold as valuable. You hold us so valuable in your eyes and in your hands, and you hold each one of our lives and each one of our family members' lives so valuable. <clears throat> if our values are anything other than the dream destiny you've given us and you've created us for, help us to see those values and help us to not be so stubborn to let go of the values that don't serve us in your pure and perfect will. Help us to line up with that. Help us to open our hands and to receive, like Delia had said, to let go of the things that we can let go of, knowing you have much richer, greater blessings for us. Help us to let go and receive, Father. Help us to give out more and to be able to receive your blessings. And help us to walk in that and walk in your integrity and your love and your joy and your peace as we go out through, through the rest of this day. And we'll just give you the glory and the honor in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, everybody that shared. Um, for those of you that will be on all at uh, Central Time, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, it, it's going to be a good conversation. I love you tons. I'm Sean Murphy, your head misfit. I'll see you all where? At your next, next event. event. At 3 o'clock. I love you all. Thank you. Have a great day. I love you guys. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day.